The Human Experience, Inside the Humanities at Stanford University, humanexperience.stanford.edu. I will have uh, statistics eventually, but uh, I have my notes on the computer, so I'm going to start off with that. And um, I have been teaching at East Tennessee uh, State University since I was at Stanford. So I've been there for three years and starting my fourth year. And I've been involved um, in thinking about core curriculum on a number of levels. So I'm going to uh, talk about that today um, and talk about specifically how uh, I've taken my experiences um, from te teaching at the, in the freshman program in IHEM uh, and applying that to, um, uh, I guess, very different students and very different classes. Um, and East Tennessee State is um, a state university. Uh, it's a regional college, so we draw mainly from that area, Eastern Tennessee, North Carolina, and Virginia. Uh, it's the Appalachian Mountain uh, system. And uh, the kind of students that we get there, I would say, are very similar to the kind that Magdalena was talking about earlier, um, where we have a lot of first-generation students. Um, there's uh, not really much of a culture uh, of, of education in the area. Uh, I think Tennessee ranks probably in the bottom 25%. Uh, in terms of uh, nationwide education in high school. Uh, so there's a, a real problem with students being prepared, I think, uh, for dealing with college when they come there. And they also um, have the problem of being uh, workers, so full-time jobs or part-time jobs. It seems like all my students work at Walmart, though I'm not sure. It's probably just my imagination. Um, so. There is that same kind of problem uh, with lack of preparation and distraction uh, from being a student and from getting an education. And um, that's really, I think, enhanced by the fact that it's, um, it's really not a college town, Johnson City. Uh, it, um, you know, it, it's uh, a small city, uh, but people live out in the mountains. Um, they live out in small communities, they're really close to their families, they're really involved in their churches. They don't really spend a lot of time on the university campus or even in the city. So uh, it's, and some of them will commute in uh, an hour for your class. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of really uh, big distractions, I think. And um, so I was thinking about two of the main um, issues that I deal with that I think IHEM is applicable to. One is the hostility and the disinterest. Disinterest if you're lucky, uh, hostility if you're not, in terms of taking core curriculum classes. And at um, ETSU, we have a variety of um, mathematics, uh, writing, literature, uh, social science classes that students take. And the class that I teach in the most um, is the American Lit, British Lit, uh, general ed class. And all students at the university have to take some version of that. Um, and so yes, most of my students are not even humanities uh, majors. That's really rare and kind of exciting for me when that happens. Uh, not having to explain why we would be reading something by Keats. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in uh, setting things up for why we're doing the class because I think that's really important um, because I think there is really a general sense and I actually invoke this on the first day which sometimes it takes a lot of energy to ask this question but, um, <clears throat> you know, what are, your, what are your favorite things that you've read recently or do you read things uh, more often than not and um, a lot of oh, I don't really like reading uh, answers, or I just read uh, manuals, things like that, to which my response is usually, well, you'll really like Marianne more because she's very technical. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I, I figure I might as well address this problem up front 
that um, they really uh, they don't really care for reading that much, and they they often don't do it at all. Um, so uh, the hostility, the disinterest, I think, um, also comes with this idea that I, I was very familiar with from IHEM of well, I'm doing computer science. Why do I need to have a class in the humanities? What's the point? Who cares? Um, just wasting time. Um, so, I mean, I do spend uh, time, I think Mary Out was talking about this before, thinking about why this class would be useful to them. So thinking about problem solving skills, really uh, critical thinking as problem solving in whatever they happen to be doing, uh, whenever they're interested in. And um, I also do um, try to make it uh, enjoyable. I think that it can never be underestimated uh, how important that is. And that was something I think that I also really um, got from my IHUM work. I mean, I taught in freshman composition classes before many times. And I, it was the experience of having really amazing students here um, that allowed me to kind of focus on um, things beyond just sort of like getting through the material. Um, so, uh, you know, coming up with ways that, that um, reading things or that writing can be fun or goofy or uh, can have some kind of strange relation to their world uh, is something that I focus on a lot in the class. Um, so in, there's, there's that problem of disinterest and, and hostility. And there's also a larger problem at ETSU, which is really, um, uh, it was really surprising to me, I guess, when I first heard it, which is about student retention. And um, I think probably Stanford, I have it down on my little chart, is probably about 90, over 95% retention. Does, does anyone know? I mean, it's just quite high. <laughs> Students generally graduate. Um, uh, but at ETSU, um, they don't. Uh, the, in 2002, the retention rate, and this was including students who transferred to other colleges in Tennessee and graduate there, was only 36%. So it's extremely, <laughs> extremely low. And uh, when I got there, um, my husband actually started working at the Honors College. So we talked a lot about this because he's, he's involved in an honors program that they're struggling to justify and struggling to keep. Um, because the university kind of feels like, well, you're throwing all this money at these, you know, these uh, elite students um, you know, and not uh, spending it in the rest of the university. Uh, but what we um, discovered was that, in fact, um, the retention rate for the Honors College was um, extremely high. It was bringing up the retention rate for the whole university. And then, in fact, the more that we kind of implemented some of these ideas, which are very much uh, linked to the sort of teaching that uh, we do in IHUM, the higher uh, the retention rate, the more students stay and finish the course and stay and finish the, at, at the university. And um, uh, I should mention that sort of the, the, the part of um, the retention problem that I see all the time is that students can't even stay out the course. Um, we have a pretty lenient, in the English department, um, attendance policy where you can miss up to three weeks of classes. This is in a semester and still pass. <laughs> When I, when I found out that that was, that was what it was, I was like, wow, okay, that shouldn't be a problem, right? But um, <laughs> uh, no, many students fail because they, they, can't, uh, they can't miss that, those few classes. Uh, and and this, is, you know, this is a problem related to um, the, the work that they're doing. Um, it's a problem related to the fact that they get very much distracted by family matters. And, that they come from a background where education isn't really necessarily valued. Um, so it's, uh, it's a real challenge to get students to pay attention to how often that they come to class, um, which I always am like keeping track of all the time and reminding them about. Uh, and um, to really feel that it's worth, worth it for them to come to class, that, um, they, that they're getting something out of it, um, that there's something that's drawing them to, to that class. So what I've been doing, and um, I'll get to, I'll show you the statistics in a minute, uh, 
is trying to build a kind of community um, in the classes that I teach, especially uh, the, the core curriculum ones, even though for me that's the most sort of counterintuitive to the classes that I could actually build that kind of a community in because the students, they don't share the same major, they're not humanities students, they're really all over the place. Um, and I do this with, with an American Lit class I have that is 36 students and um, the Brit Lit class that I have is 26. And it is a challenge uh, with the, the 36 students for me. I mean, I teach three classes a semester, so I have 70 to 90 students usually. Memorizing everybody's name <laughs> every semester is really hard, but I think uh, for me very essential that they know that I recognize who they are. Uh, Magdalena was talking about that earlier, that they feel a sense of responsibility that they know I notice when they're not there. Uh, you know, that I can ask them about how, uh, things are going, uh, that they actually come and talk to me about uh, a problem that they might have um, where in a lot of times in a lot of classes they would just drop the class or stop coming because they would feel like, well, this is kind of an insurmountable problem. I'm not even really going to deal with it. I'm just going to let it go. I'll take this class again. They also have a very generous policy at ETSU. If you fail a course, you can retake it and get the, the latter grade. So you, can, you don't have to keep those Fs always on your transcript, which I also thought was crazy <laughs> when I first got there. And I uh, see why it, why it is that way. Um, so uh, for me, one of the, the most important things for me about IHUM was definitely community. And it wasn't only in the classrooms. It was what the other people that I was working with. And it was the thing that really kept me um, focused and interested in what was going on and excited about talking about pedagogy, which isn't always necessarily my favorite topic. Um, but, you know, feeling that kind of connection or being able to draw from other people's ideas. Um, and I, I can't remember if it was Amy who came up with the speed uh, meetings. It was speed dating. Somebody did. Somebody did. I don't know who it was. But yeah, I mean, I have used that too. And uh, I was like kind of freaked out by how well that worked when I was at Stanford. I had a, you know, I'd come in and there would be 15 people who were like really nerdy and shy and like, you know, uncomfortable and kind of angry. And, and we'd do that. And then they would just talk constantly, you know. It was really difficult in some, in, in some classes to get them to focus, uh, you know, and not be like, blah, 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 we're going to share all these ideas. So I, I it, you know, I don't have that level of response at ETSU certainly, but it has made a huge difference to have people talking to each other in the classes. Um, no matter what, I, you know, squeeze in a little bit of time for them to do some small group work. They work with the same groups throughout the semester, and they actually get to know some of the people in the classes. And because they're really connected with social media and everything, um, they will check up on each other, which is great. Uh, so, you know, somebody, uh, so-and-so, uh, Adrienne's going to be late to class because she's trying to find parking. Okay. You know, and I, I think it's um, kind of sweet that they actually tell me this stuff. <laughs> um, but it, it, it has made a big difference um, in terms of, for me, being able to retain uh, students throughout the semester in a class. And um, one of the other things I've been doing while I'm there is building up the film studies minor. And it was kind of in a mess uh, when I got there. And um, I've been there three years. Um, I've doubled the amount of film studies minors uh, who are there because I think they've responded really well um, to the classes and to the way that I run the classes. And I, I started a um, film club uh, mainly because of retention problems because a lot of the students who are film studies minors are in um, broadcasting, and broadcasting uh, at ETSU is very notorious for um, having students that just uh, flunk out all the time. So um, that's actually been giving them a kind of focused purpose, things to think about, having screenings. We had a Halloween party uh, with horror films and things like that. And ETSU doesn't have very much money, um, but you know, there's, there's sort of little things that we can do uh, like that that um, that got them excited uh, about the subject matter more and got them interested in talking about it, which I can't remember who, who mentioned this earlier, but for me, you know, is, is really the most exciting part of my job to actually talk about the subject matter. Um, okay, let me 
this up here. So um, I do think statistics are really important. Um, you know, you can have a lot of anecdotal evidence in terms of what you experience in the classroom. And for me, it was really obvious that students have a hard time sticking throughout the semester, that when I started doing things like um, getting, you know, introducing them, building community, making them responsible for each other and for the material, um, that uh, that really helped. And uh, so, uh, in 2002, the statistics for ETSU, 36% uh, retention, which was definitely less than uh, the rest of uh, the university, it's a TBR system, and uh, nationwide, less than nationwide, 56%, places like Stanford, 90 for 95 or better. Um, what happened at ETSU in 2003 was they started a, the Honors College. and the Honors College um, was a few different programs. Uh, one of them is uh, the university scholars, and they get actually full rides. Uh, another one is arts and performance scholarship. And then they actually have something called honors in the discipline, so students um, take honors classes, um, but they aren't uh, scholarship students necessarily. And in the six years after that, uh, what happened um, was that uh, the overall retention of students at ETSU increased to 47.5%. Um, the uh, students who qualify for honors but who don't take honors uh, was about 53%. The honors students was at 95%. Uh, students who graduated with honors but who may have also dropped out of the honors program at some time was 89%. And the arts honors students uh, was about 80 to 85. Um, so I thought these were very interesting figures. And uh, what it really um, told me and, and told the people working in the honors college was that the way that that program was set up, which uh, was a cohort model, um, really worked uh, to keep students interested and to keep students there. Uh, and um, they basically have like a one credit class for um, the whole time that they're there. Uh, so they get to know everybody in the, the, the huge program and they're always kind of doing stuff and talking about stuff with them. And then they have um, three years of honors uh, core classes. And uh, it's lower for the art students. It's only a two-credit class. For the, um, for the university honor students, it's a three-credit class. And uh, to me, that's one of the reasons, actually, why there's that difference between those two groups of people. And that's one of the reasons that I'm being uh, asked to uh, teach another uh, arts honor student's um, core curriculum class to see um, if we can do anything about that uh, retention rate. Um, and of course, the students who had had some kind of um, some kind of presence in the program uh, it was a lot higher as well in terms of staying. And so, for me, the biggest difference um, in, is in terms of looking at that 95 and 53 percent. So, the students who are like really smart, uh, you know, who could be in the honors program but don't really take those classes, the retention rate is significantly lower. Um, a lot of them drop out. And, um, you know, there's different reasons for that. Uh, I think scholarship money is actually not one of the primary reasons because a lot of students at Tennessee do get lottery scholarships. Um, uh, it seems to me that one of the, the main reasons for this is because they, they're just not making any connections there. Um, you know, the, most of the students at the school tend to get kind of freaked out when they're separated from their families. And um, so a lot of times they just go back. Uh, or, in, you know, they might um, wait years again to go back to college. Um, okay, so uh, that kind of ends the, my explanation uh, of my experience with that. Um, what I wanted to do is, um, have people talk a little bit in small groups before we, we talk uh, in, a, in a large group, uh, you know, active learning. And um, think about, um, or just sort of, uh, and you can talk to somebody you don't know, that would be great if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, and uh, talk about um, core curriculum uh, challenges 
at your university. So, of course, you know, start off by kind of maybe introducing what kind of university you're at. And then uh, what the primary challenges are that you have. Uh, and think about um, whether or not you've been able to use kind of any IHUM techniques or practices uh, in that process and if it's been successful or not. Um, and then, so while I'll uh, give you guys about 10 minutes uh, to talk about those things and then uh, any questions, comments, ideas, whatever afterwards, um, I'll open the floor. <laughs>